Welcome back to Open Line. We are talking with State Senator Mark Pody, Republican from Lebanon. He is here literally while the legislature is on a recess, on a short break. He's here talking with us about what's going on up there, but also about some of the bills dealing with abortion that have come up in this legislative session. We will have Planned Parenthood on Monday. Um, you are pro-life and have supported many of the bills that have come up. And so we talked about one, which was the yes. heartbeat bill and how it changed and evolved. Um, and I also want to say we're streaming this live on our News Channel 5 Plus Facebook page comment, and we'll read some of the comments. What are some of the other bills there, abortion bills? All right, so another one is should the government continue to put money into, uh, for example, Planned Parenthood? In Planned Parenthood, there are some things that they do with the women's f facilities and women's health that are terrific. Um, however, there are some people that are very, feel very strongly should not be supportive for abortion. And part of the, we'll look at it this way. If, if the woman is right, and I'm absolutely wrong on, on my issue, that, that it is totally up to the women's, and there's not a life in there, and she should be able to do whatever she wants, and I'm absolutely wrong. And I'm making that, that lady go through a very hard emotional issue, and for nine months she's going to have to carry this baby, and then either give it up for abortion, or for adoption, or, or raise that baby. Um, and and I, I, I got to accept that. I could be, if, if that's correct, that's what, what I'm putting somebody through. However, if, if I'm right, and that is a life, then I got to do everything I possibly can to protect that life to the fullest I can. So in this case, um, I believe in my heart that I'm right, and I got to protect that. So if there's money from the federal government or state government that's going to a facility that would perform that, and there's other facilities that would give the same health programs that Planned Parenthood has. Um, Let's direct that money to the exact same health facilities in the same neighborhoods um, rather than give that money to um, people that might get abortions. And so we're not trying to say that you know the health services don't have to happen. We want those health services, the wellness services, and the checkups for, for women. We want that. We want to fund that. We just don't want to fund it in organizations that are doing abortions. So is there a sense that with President Trump in office now, he certainly wants to appoint justices to the Supreme Court that... Um, that he has said would overturn Roe versus Wade. Is there a sense that legislatures that lean more pro-life are trying to pass all kinds of things that could get up to the Supreme Court and overturn that? Um, I won't say that there's a big sense that's different because every single year that I've been here, we've tried to do something. Um, so we've always tried to see if we can't pass some piece of legislation to, to do that. Now that uh, President Trump's there, we do feel that maybe we can take a little bigger step, so, so there might be a bigger step that we're trying, but it's not that we haven't been trying this whole time, so it's not like all of a sudden, um, a year ago, we said, ah, President Trump's there, so now we can do something. We, we've been trying to carry this conversation uh, throughout the time that I've been there, so all, all eight years I've been here, we've been holding this conversation and these kind of bills. Is this year bigger? You're looking at like four bills. You've tried to advance something every year, but what about, is this year, are you seeing more activity? No, I, I will tell you, our biggest success was on what they call SJR 127, and, and that turned into a constitutional amendment for the state of Tennessee. So in the eight years that I've been here, that by far has been the huge or uh, the biggest success that, that we've had, because that made it where Tennessee is a neutral state. It's not pro or con uh, uh, on the abortion issue. It used to be we were very favorable for abortions in Tennessee. Um, and once we got that as a constitutional amendment, we became totally Teflon. It's not pro or con. It is now neutral. The law of the land is abortion is legal. Some states are restricting it. Tennessee's right up there to the point that it's going to be very difficult. I don't know if you would say impossible, but very difficult to get an abortion. How do you feel about that? That there's st some states, if you just go across the state line, the laws are completely different. And from one state to another, somebody in Tennessee might have a really difficult time getting an abortion. In another state, it would be a completely different thing. Is that, mm. is that a good thing, patchwork sort of situation across the entire country? I, for, 
for where I am, I like the fact that Tennessee should have Tennessee rules, Tennessee laws and values. And I don't think that Tennessee needs to um, implant what we believe in New York or what we believe in California. Let each of those states make their decisions of what they feel is right. Um, now the federal government's there for some things and they, we want them to have continuity. But on something like this, if it's a state by state basis, uh, I'm fine because that way I'm not worried about what they're doing in New York at this point. I'm going to worry about what's happening in Tennessee. So people that don't have means, people that don't have money, um, they probably wouldn't get to travel to New York or some other state that has a more lenient situation. And then, so they're, they're, they're here. They've got to they're live here. under those, those rules. And so if there's somebody who, for whatever reason, they desperately want, feel like it's the right thing for them to do to have an abortion, and they have means, then they can travel to another state. And somebody yep. that doesn't have means, they can't. How do you feel about that? Right. Um, I'm not here to justify, you know, in that case, I'm here to fight for every baby, whether um, that mother has means or not. I want to pr try and protect and save that baby. Uh, for those that, that feel, you know what, you're putting me in a spot where I've got to raise these children, uh, we want to make it as, if they want to put those children up for adoption, we will help them do that. We want to make it as easy and as, as um, painless as we possibly can. I understand that they've got this and it's going to be the emotional scar of giving up a child or whatever, and, and I get that. But on the other hand, I also get that this is a this is a life, and I want to do everything I possibly can to protect that life. So I'm going to put that life of that baby ahead of the needs of that, that parent. And, and I just feel very strongly we want to protect those babies. Let's uh, go to the phone. Let's go to Lucy. Hello, Lucy. Hey, y'all. Hi. What's on your mind? Well, hey, Mr. Pody, I appreciate you coming over because I know y'all are really busy over there on Capitol Hill. But you said something earlier. You said that these unborn uh, fetuses were citizens and that it was your duty to protect them. And I'm just curious, if I was from China and I came here to Tennessee, uh, since I'm, I would be a communist Chinese, I would not be a citizen. Therefore, my baby wouldn't be a citizen. Do you think it's still okay for me to go ahead and have an abortion? Because a lot of a lot of women are coming here from China and having what they call these anchor babies to get citizenships for their babies. But what if they had to have an abortion? You know, at uh, six months or something. Usually, they're coming here about two months before before they're due. What if they had to have an abortion, say, at, you know, five months? And uh, could they have one in Tennessee since they're not a citizen? And I I'll just take your comments off the air if you feel like commenting no, on this. Lu and, okay. and Lucy, that's a, that's a very great comment, and that's a very good point. Uh, but I'm here to protect life, and I'm not here to say it's going to be because um, they're from one country or another or whatever. If I'm protecting life, I want to protect that life. So uh, however that falls out, I want to I want to do everything I can to protect that life. The citizen is, that's not in play for you. No, no, that that's not, that's not the issue. Um, you know, so that the citizenship would mean, you know, what are the rights they're entitled to? I'm saying they're entitled to life, and that's what I'm trying to fight for. What are some of the other bills that were up um, for abortion, dealing with abortion? Right. So there was actually another one that was kind of interesting, and that just happened today. It passed on the, um, the Senate floor tonight, and that was should they have something on the Capitol grounds uh, for, uh, I'm saying, like a monument to the unborn children? And, and that's gone through a metamorphosis of different type of things that it should have or shouldn't have. Um, it was not one that I was jumping up and down to do. I'm not saying that that's, you know, I wasn't going to sponsor the bill or whatever. And in one form, I wasn't even jumping up down to support it. Uh, but the way it came out, when we actually said, um, how is this going to happen? It's suggesting to the Capitol Commission that uh, they should consider putting this on the grounds of the Capitol. Um, what would the cost of this be? It's not going to cost anything because it's, if it's going to happen, it would have to be done by private citizens with, with raised by private money through donations. So it wouldn't cost the state anything. You know, there are some people who say, you know what, you're putting something on the grounds that would cause me emotional stress every time I walk through it. And But I can say, you know what, Andrew Jackson has some of the same things. You know, I mean, I look what things we have done that we would call heroes at one time, but uh, people would say, you know, that they hurt my ancestry or they did this. Um, and on the other hand, there's been people saying, you know what, at least we're recognizing the, the people that have gone through it, and they want to turn around and have a way that they can vent their, uh, their feelings in a positive way. So, Is there a, 
dictate about what it would look like? No. How do we determine? No. That would be up to the Capital Commission. And I'm glad I'm not on the Capital Commission. So that, that's a, uh, you know, the Speaker appoints different uh, people on there. I think the Governor appoints different people on there. And they make those decisions. Um, you know, if I had my choice, I would say, you know, that could be done at a private place somewhere and um, do something like that rather than on, a, on the capital grounds. Uh, however, I am going to try and go for as many pro-life things as I, as I can. And when the senator came up and said, you know, I, I know the people on the Capitol Commission and I just want the legislative intent to say that this is suggestions that what we're suggesting the Capitol Commission will do, um, I was more comfortable with it that way. So it passed. It passed. It in passed. both the House and Senate. Both House and Senate. It's passed. And so then if Governor Haslam signs it, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. How soon would there be a monument on uh, the grounds it, of the it state could capitol? Take, it could take years if the Capitol Commission decides to do it. Um, they could decide not to. So, so it's not saying that you will do that. Um, it, it's not a deadline. You have to do it by this date or you have to raise the funds. If there's no money raised, it's not going to happen. Um, so it's not something that is, is, we're saying will be done by such and such a time and it's going to cost this much money. Sometimes it almost seems like people are up there just trying to poke at each other. Um, you know, yeah, like uh, this, <laughs> I don't know what this does. I mean, maybe it makes people feel better. But again, it's it's not getting at the real issue. That's correct. And you know, and it's just, maybe it just makes people upset. Um, and, and like I said, I wasn't jumping up and down for it originally. And, and um, it's not the a major piece that went through. I would much rather have science help determine where we are and move forward on things that we can agree on. And, and, and sometimes that's the best thing to do is what can we all agree on with one side or another and get that done and where we're not walking away with everybody upset. Um, and I think that this, the bill that we did with uh, ultrasound was maybe a good way to look at that. You know, I mean, it's, it's definitely gonna get more facts out for people to say, you know, I get to see what that baby would look like and, and see the movement or, and such and then make determination what they want to go from, from there. As far as accessibility to abortion in Tennessee, where do we, where do we stand? Pretty easy yet. You think it's pretty easy? Yes, yes, it is. It, um, we are, we're not necessarily the destination state that we were at one point, because a few years ago we were one of the destination states in the nation, but um, it, we are still up there with the number of abortions that we do. We're still a fairly easy state to get abortions. Let's go to Bill here before we go to break. Hello, Bill? Yes. Go right ahead. What's on your mind? Yes, I wanted to ask, um, it, it seems like all this is, 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 is uh, this part about abortion is it's really puzzling me because I don't see how anyone can, you know, an organism to be called an individual life has to have self-awareness. And how can anyone look at an x-ray or an ultrasound and determine when self-awareness enters a fetus? So this yeah. is the argument about when life begins. You're saying life begins when there is self-awareness. Without self-awareness, there's not individual life. Right. All right. So this, okay, this is, this is that debate. Sure. This, and, sure. And I don't know that we can ever answer this. Right. You're, you're, you're probably going to say it's about when the heartbeat starts. And he's going to say, well, it's self-awareness, which wouldn't be until after... I don't know when they're self-aware. Well, that could mean that there's people that are in a vegetable state or they're in a coma or um, are, are they self-aware? Are they aware of what's going on? And so if, if, that's, that, if that's the key of when somebody is um, life, and that could be an argument that he, that he obviously, Bill obviously has. Um, I understand that there's going to be different points of view of when that might happen. In my case, I just think that it is not self-awareness. I think that there's other times that it would be um, life. And if somebody's in a coma, I believe that's life and I want to protect that life. You know, we had the right to not die things. You know, should we help them help them die? And, and I don't. I don't think that we should. I, I think that we want to protect that life as much as I can. Oh, well, and I said you might think it's with a heartbeat. but it, the other is just at the moment of conception. Yes, so, and, and I'm a conception guy. So that would that would take it back really further. Yes, <laughs> yes. Moment of conception, or heartbeat, or self-awareness. Yes. And there's no way to, to know the right answer. Now, and right now we don't. Uh, there's not a scientific way that we could say that this is, this is it. Um, and that's why there's going to be people on both sides of the issue, and they're passionate about it, and they're going to be trying to discuss what's going ahead. Um, and, and I would rather find a way to do it in 
and I know it's an emotional issue, but I'd rather find a way that we can talk through it um, with common sense and say, what can we do to go forward? And, and whatever that ground is, let's work on that ground first and then worry about other things later. But is there issues that we can go forward on together first? All right, we're going to take a break. Um, we should have taken a break a while ago, but we'll take a break and come back. There's the number if you want to call, 615-737-PLUS, 615-737-7587. Take a break. Be back right after this.